my wife, she, first thing she asked me this morning, she said, do you care if I not record? I said, well, you're fine not recording me anytime you want to. <laughs> and uh, then a while ago, she came up here and put it on. I said, I thought you wasn't going to record. I think she wants to make sure I don't say anything about it while I'm up here. <laughs> But anyways, I, I was uh, studying last week, and, and I've been hearing this song on the radio a whole lot. Um, it's called uh, Honey in the Rock. And and when I first heard this song, I got to thinking about it. I was thinking, you know what? I, I know I've heard that before in the oh, Bible. Yeah. I said, I've heard it before, I said, but, but I don't really, I don't understand. You know, I, I, I don't really understand what the meaning of it is. Because if you just hear four words out of a scripture, it kind of just leaves everything out in the open, you know. And so uh, this week I began to study on it, and I got to thinking about it, and uh, I was studying it, and uh, you know, God began to talk to me, and and after I began to study this, it it makes you appreciate the song that much more, you know, you, when you really understand what they're talking about and the importance of it. I'm going to go to uh, Psalms 81 and 16. And, you know, I, I was studying this, and then, you know, when you get something together, you begin to study, and then, then all of a sudden God gives you an experience that makes you understand more about what you've been studying. And it says, He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock. Should I have satisfied thee? And I was thinking when I was reading this, I, I was wondering why honey? Why honey out of the rock? Wouldn't it be wouldn't it be more likely you would think you know they would want they would, he would want to give these people water or something sustaining, not just something that's sweet. But when you get to thinking about it, you realize that. That this sweetness is something that we don't have to have in our life, but it's something that God gives us for our enjoyment. God, He provides us with everything that we need, even from sources and the situations where we least expect it. And we all know that honey. You can't find honey in a rock. You can grab every rock that you find out there and squeeze it as hard as you can and there ain't going to be any honey come out of it. But, you know, this is the example that he gave to show that, that he can make things where it's not. That's he can create things. He can supply us with things where it's not supposed to be. And those song lyrics, it said, There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, Manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the rock. Thank you, Jesus. You know, being faithful, it means relying on God in moments of difficulty. We trust Him and He guides and protects us in every situation. What's interesting is that they chose this verse about honey. Honey is sweet. It's not usually classified, classified as a necessary thing that we need to survive. God's love doesn't want us to survive only with what is essential. He can also give us sweetness in the wild world that we live in. He wants us to be able to enjoy the things that He gives us. He doesn't just want to give us you know, in the Old Testament, they, they a lot of times people would eat bread. And even in the New Testament, a lot of times the only thing people had to eat was bread. But God wants to give us more than bread. Yes. Smell the roses. He will not only provide us with the necessary things that we need, but also sweet things that are not requirements for survival. The other part of the song lyrics says... Sweetness at the mercy seat. Now I've tasted it's not hard to see. Only you can satisfy. Freedom where the spirit is. Bounty in the wilderness. 
you will always satisfy. Look the whole world over. And I was thinking about this. You know, God, he, he always satisfies us. He always gives us the things that we need. And it's it's so amazing at how he shines when you when you least expect him to, or when you've just about given up. And it's just all of a sudden there he is. He shows up. Nearly fainted. And uh, I was thinking about Moses when he brought the people out of Egypt after they crossed the Red Sea. I'm gonna go to Exodus chapter 16. We'll start with verse 8. It says, And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. The Lord. For that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses spake unto Aaron, saying unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation, to the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh. And in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning the dew lay down, lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as a hoar frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. For they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, on more for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in the tents. Angels, you know, the Israelites, they had just been delivered from the hands of Egypt. When they crossed the Red Sea, they were murmuring. They were wanting food, that they were hungry. And they were talking against God. Oh, God. You know, they say, well, he brought us this far, and now we're just going to starve to death. You can hear all these people just talking to each other, you know. He got us out here in the middle of nowhere, and now we're going to starve to death. They were deceived. Moses told them that God would provide meat for them to eat and bread in the morning to be filled. And they still murmured. In the evening, God provided quail to eat, and in the morning, he provided bread. And they were told to gather enough food for themselves and those that were with them. God provides us with the things we need. But the talking about the honey and the rock, it shows us that he wants to provide us with things that are sweet and satisfying, not just what we need, but more than just what we need. He could just... He could have just supplied the Israelites with bread. It would have been, he could have just gave them bread to eat. But he also supplied them with meat. He gave them the best. He gave them the best. Amen. I've never had quail, but I've heard a lot of people say that quail is one of the, the most delicacy of the birds that you can actually eat. You know, they say it's like a delicacy to eat quail. And this is what God gave to them. He gave them a delicacy. And uh, a lot of people may think it's crazy, but, you know, I, I pray a lot 
when I get in, in just about everything that I do, I always try to make sure that that I pray. You're very smart. And uh, and and a lot of people may think this is really stupid, no. but whenever I got up to my tree stand on Saturday morning, the first thing I did when I sat down was I began to pray. I'm here for God. You know, and I prayed. I said, I said, God, I said. The prices of meat is getting real high. I said, so it'd be nice if you'd just send a deer my way. I said, it'd be nice if you just send one deer my way. And then about 20 minutes later, a deer came along. <coughs> and uh, when I shot and I seen the deer hit the ground, I said, thank you, God. And Whenever I first began deer hunting, it was all about the fun. I liked deer meat, but it was all about going and having fun. You know, I was a lot younger than I am now. I didn't have a family to provide for and things like that. And, and it was all about the fun. And when I go deer hunting, I still enjoy it. But after these last few years, we begin to, you, you really begin to, you, you rely on these things. You know, you rely on that the, the meat that you get when you go hunting, you know. Uh, I was figuring it up, and for each decent-sized deer that you get, it's about $300 or a little over worth of meat that you get from each one. And, uh, and then I was sitting there up in my stand, and about 15 minutes later, I was still sitting there at, I don't know how a lot of people do it, but after I shoot a deer, I set up in my stand for about 20 to 30 minutes before I get down and go down there where that deer's at. Uh, I've had them, they, they'll jump up and take off running and all that, so I always just sit there for about 20 or 30 minutes. About 15 minutes later, here come two more deer walking across there. And I had my gun up and I had one of the deers in my scope. And then out of the corner of my eye, I seen this bigger deer coming behind me. And so I looked, and it was a it was a really big deer back there. And so I put my gun on it, and I shot it. And I said, thank you, God. And then I got to thinking about what I had been studying, this honey in the raw. You know, it's a sweetness. I asked God for one, and he gave me two. And it may not mean much to a whole lot of people, but... It means a lot to me because I asked God for this and he gave it to me. And a lot of people say, well, you just got lucky and them deer came along. You just got to pray to God. But you know what? God sent them deer that way because I prayed for them. You know, he did. And that's the way I believe it and that's the way that I see it. And... uh and like I said, it may not mean a whole lot to a lot of other people, but it means a lot to us. Because those two deer, honestly, will feed our family for the majority of this year. That's almost all the meat we need for the whole year. And that was God that supplied that for us. And, uh, which I know he supplies in other ways, and you know, all aspects of our life. But I just thought it was really interesting that I had been studying this. And then God, he, this just happened this weekend. You know, God done this this weekend. And it just went right along with what I'd been studying, how we can ask for things and God will give us more than what we ask for. Every time we ask God for things, we may not always get more than what we ask for. But he wants to give us more, yeah. you know. And, and these verses right here, they tell us that he doesn't want to just give us what we need. He wants us to give us more. He wants us to give us the sweetness that we can enjoy in this life. He wants to give us things beyond what we ask for. Yes. He doesn't want us just to survive. They got that uh, that song out. It's called uh, We Were Born to Thrive. You know, it's a Christian song. And uh, they... Uh, that's what God wants. He doesn't want us just to survive. He wants us to thrive. Well, yes. He wants us to have more than what we need. Mm -hmm. And he will always give it to us as we need it. Amen. 
you know, when when we need it, he's going to give us more. He's going to give it to us. And uh, I, it just really touched me this weekend, you know, and, and it's, like I said, to a lot of people it may sound really stupid, but but when I prayed, I believed that God was going to do that. You know, I had faith that he was going to do that. And I, to be honest with you, I had faith that he was only going to send one. <laughs> but he, he gave me more. Above and beyond. You know, he gave me more. And I want to thank God for giving me more. Because all I asked for was one. And he gave me two. And like I said, a lot of people think, you know, this is just an old deer hunter story. It's just an old deer hunter story. Well, it's not. This is a God story. It might have been just an old deer hunter story if I, when I got up in my tree stand, if I hadn't prayed that God would send me a deer. And, you know, part of the reason that I might have been that I was praying so early was that, you know, it was cold. It was real cold, and I was hoping it wouldn't take very long so that I could get back to camp and warm up. But either way, God provided. He answered my prayers, and he gave me more than what I'd asked for. And he doesn't always give us, like I said, more than what we asked for. Because I began to pray about probably about five or six years ago when I started going deer hunting. I, every opening morning when I go up to my stand, I always pray. And I got to looking back. And I never realized this before, but I think I've killed a deer every opening morning for the past three or four years now, I think. I think and I and I never put, in my mind, I'm sitting here thinking, you, why have you never put two and two together? You know, why have you never put this together? And, I, you know, it, it never came to me until this year. That, you know, this was God. I, I guess I wasn't focusing on it like I should. You know, it. so many times I guess we pray and God answers our prayers and we don't give him credit for it. You know, there's a lot of times that we do that and then we just think, well, I, I got lucky this morning. That, that deer just came back by and then you forget all about it. That's what you prayed for when you went up there. You know, that was God answering a prayer and I didn't give him credit for it. And I began to realize that. And, and like I said, as I look back, I realized that for the last four or five years, he had been answering my prayers every opening morning. Every opening morning for the last four or five years, he'd been answering my prayers, and I never gave him any credit for it. So we need to make sure that when we pray for things, that we give God the credit. Yes. And one thing that I realized, I guess, this year is when you give him the credit, maybe that's when he wants to give you more. Amen. You know, this year, that first deer, like I said, I said, thank you, Jesus. And then 15 minutes later, here comes some more. He wants you to share. You know, so maybe God will give us more if we start giving him the recognition that he needs, the recognition that he deserves. Well deserved. I'm going to close with that. Let's put it.